That's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. Hey guys, it's Keegan. Welcome back to my channel. Happy Monday. I announced today that I was laid off from my job. Not like announced, but I posted it out. I talked about it publicly. Posted my YouTube video, posted TikToks. I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all like the support and encouragement that you guys sent my way. Just like the well wishes and just like the faith that you guys have in me. It means so much. I mean, I definitely had like the Sunday scaries yesterday being like, oh my God, I'm going to post about this getting laid off. And I talked about this in the vlog where I got laid off, but like I feel embarrassed, but at the same time, I know it's not an embarrassing thing, but it's hard not to feel embarrassed. And you guys just made me feel so much better about it. The faith that you guys have in me is insane probably more faith than I have in myself but I think that we are all our harshest critic it means so sorry I'm putting on chapstick I have a bunch of aquaphor in these little tubes all around my apartment I keep calling these tubes these are little containers but somebody the other day told me I was the queen of aquaphor and I was like that is so nice of you to say anyways back to what I was saying I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for all the support that you guys have for me a couple of things to talk about on Wednesday I have a 15 minute like intro call with a company or like kind of like a screening call it was actually really funny I've been like just like applying for a job on LinkedIn like nothing super serious but I have been like you know applying for jobs and somebody messaged me and it was somebody who worked at my company I never really knew them I never talked to them but I always recognized their face because they sat next to the bathroom door and I have a small bladder and I go to the bathroom all the time this person messaged me on LinkedIn and they were like hey I saw like you applied for this job like do you want to like schedule like a 15 minute screening call with me and I recognized them even though I never talked to them like I just recognized the face and I was like oh my gosh what a small world hopefully maybe like that connection will get me further so on Wednesday I have that 15 minute little call definitely gonna be panicking about that but i will keep my panic to myself <laughs> yeah this has been kind of just like a crazy 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 day it's actually a little bit later in the day today so this morning i woke up i went to the gym i got ready and i filmed like a tiktok explaining <laughs> me getting laid off and then it was actually the solar eclipse so i got these solar eclipse glasses and i saw it how do i look i can't see anything these are literally pitch black like look i don't know if you guys can see this that's what you see through these glasses literally it's pitch black there wasn't like full you know whatever in arizona but it was pretty cool so i bought these because i wanted to see it i was like how often does this happen this is cool and i'm like unemployed so i have all the time in the world to look at the clips i filmed my video talking about getting laid off and i posted it and i edited a couple tiktoks and then i actually had a home inspection today so my last vlog on friday toured a house and i didn't want to show i think i would like wait till like it's all finalized this is honestly not the process how i wanted to show this to you guys i wanted to tell you guys about me this is actually a condo it's not a home i wanted to talk about the process of me getting this and i just kind of wanted to be like surprise i got it like yay i wanted to take you guys through the journey after it happened i'm kind of taking you guys through the journey in real time now because i had a condo that i put an offer and had an inspection everything was ready and then it turned out that i couldn't get the home because it wasn't properly insured and no bank would lend on it and so i couldn't get it found this place thursday night i saw it online friday we toured it put an offer on friday friday night i found out that they accepted my offer <sighs> That's crazy, that's crazy, that's crazy. And we had the inspection today, it went well. There are things that are, nothing's concerning, but there are things that I want them to change. Like I want them to put smoke detectors because they don't have smoke detectors in the place. Like what, like why do they don't have smoke detectors? Little things like the cabinets don't like really like glide into the drawers thing or like the drawers don't, you know, there's little things that I want them to change, but nothing concerning to the point that I was like, I shouldn't get this. So yeah, I'm really afraid this is a stupid decision of me buying a condo when I'm unemployed, but I do, oh, I'm just like worried about like how long I'm going to be unemployed for. And if I am going to be anticipating dipping into the savings that I have put away for a down payment, that like really scares me, but I do have an emergency fund. So I'm not doing this entirely dumb. The entire reason that I wanted to do this was because my mortgage payment would be the same amount that I pay for rent. And so it would be the exact same thing, just a down payment you know but i do have an emergency i feel like i'm like really talking my finances with you guys right now it does make me really worried that i'm like is this a stupid decision for me to be doing this i do have a small income coming in from doing social media it's not like a huge thing but you know i did get my offer accepted on a house on a i'm calling it a house it's a condo but i'm gonna be a homeowner <laughs> So I feel like things are really turning around for me. Um, I think last week I was talking about this and like I had hit, like I feel like I had hit rock bottom last week. And I think that I finally just accepted myself and allowed myself to like feel those feelings. And the second I did that is when things started turning around for me. And so I think that me kind of just like avoiding them. And honestly, like I don't want to say that me trying to look on the bright side and trying to be positive was like preventing me from positive things happening because I don't believe that. But I think that the second I just kind of like leaned into the fact 
act of like feeling my emotions the second after that when things started turning around so maybe i just needed to actually feel the way that i was feeling to have things turn around i don't know like it was just kind of a weird thing that like the second that things that really went bad and i just finally gave up was when things started turning around for me because you would think it'd be the opposite you would think that like the more resilient and the more positive you are like the better it will happen but it didn't happen that way for me things are still amazing you know i'm still not employed that's kind of what i've been up to so we had the inspection all went well and then my mom my real estate agent and i we all got lunch together and then i came home i worked on some sponsorships i i've been doing a lot today and then i'm starting to film like my closet cleanup video so i've been posting stuff on poshmark and now we are finally here if you guys remember in my last vlog if you watch the very end i talked about how i got invited to coachella which is insane i'm going a weekend too if i'm being honest like i like can't process that happening like the fact that that's happening is insane and i think that like i just keep telling myself that maybe like losing my job although i loved my job and like it, i really do feel like it was perfect maybe it was just making room for something better uh, someone was saying they're like oh you couldn't have gone to coachella if you had your job and i was like i could have taken pto but choosing to look on the bright side but i did order a ton of stuff i pretty much had like a two week notice that i'm going to coachella so i had to express ship some outfits i really hope they fit i really hope they look good kind of worried they don't i'm gonna be real with you guys my outfits are not gonna slay the way that everybody else's outfits slay at coachella because i have like very little time to prepare but we're gonna try to slay as much as possible i'm going for like cowboy boots and a dress vibe all of coachella my friends i talked about this they were so nice and they were like come with us stay with us drive with us and like literally i can't even like ah like i won't like shake them and hug them and say like i can't even fathom that they are so nice and that they're just like letting me join them and like intruding on their plans like i cannot believe that's happening they sent me their outfits and i was like okay you guys are gonna look much cuter than me but it's gonna be fine <laughs> so i ordered these these had if this is exactly what i think it is i hope it is these had great reviews on amazon that they were comfortable which is exactly what you need for coachella i've also never been to coachella in my life before never i don't even think i've ever been to like a music festival and so i've no idea what to expect the people that i'm going with my friends i'm going with are like pro coachella they're like coachella experts in my mind because they've been many times and so the fact that they're letting me go is just ah! like i just can't believe they're letting me go with them oh i opened this the wrong way so i ordered the same pair of cowboy boots in three different colors this is the f oh these are so cute oh my gosh i hope they fit my feet they're also supposed to be like wide calf because i have big ass calves i'm gonna link all this stuff down below for you guys how freaking cute please fit please fit Oh, these fit like a glove. Obviously with the jeans, not a look. Wow, these are so cute. Oh, they are big calves. There's plenty of room for my calves in these. Oh my, these are so cute. <gasps> look at that. Obviously with the jeans, not a sleigh, but like so cute. Oh my gosh. They're so soft too. I'm already obsessed. Wow. I'm just gonna walk around my single cowboy boot. <laughs> I'm obsessed. So yes, I, I did order these in brown, black, and in white. And I'm just gonna return the ones that I don't think are gonna go with the outfits because I ordered a couple options for outfits. I'll link all the stuff down below. I'll also link this top down below for you guys because I wore this in my little get ready feed talking about getting laid off. And so many people were like, where is it from? It's from garage. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite tops. I used to wear it to work. I would wear it to work with a bra so it was like a little more professional, but it is so cute. I love it so much and they still sell it. I'll link it down below. I love it. Some offices may not like, this may not be like work appropriate, but I, I love even for like casualness, like with a pair of jeans. So cute. Also, well, I really keep going on tangents. My favorite pair of jeans, I ripped them. I want to know how to sew them together because I'm like, these are my favorite pair of jeans. Anyways, we have a lot of life updates for you guys in the beginning of this vlog, but but I've been up to a lot today. So, so, so much. Also, I did my makeup today and I just feel like whenever I do my makeup, I feel so much more productive and better about myself. The only reason I did my makeup and like put on an outfit, the only reason I did my makeup actually was because I wanted to film me getting laid off and I was gonna do it like get ready with me style. And then I put on an outfit because I had my home inspection. But I'm thinking, one thing that I really enjoyed about working my office job was like getting ready and like having an outfit, doing my makeup because it made me feel like physically more put together. And so maybe i just need to do that more often even while i'm working from home it's just like annoying because it feels kind of like a waste when no one can see me like what's the point of putting on jeans and you know using up my makeup when no one's seeing me but i think that mentally it kind of puts me in the right headspace i'm gonna try to start doing that even if it's like two or three days a week because i used to do it three days a week with my job because i worked hybrid so maybe i'm gonna try that it's hard because it feels like a waste of time and products but i think that what it does for me mentally is so much better i don't know I just 
looked at the clock and it's four o'clock and I told myself that once it's four o'clock I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna go on a walk because I feel like I've really not been prioritizing that like it's so weird and I was thinking about this the other day that when I do social media full-time I feel like I work more hours the thing is like in my head I'm like I'm doing nothing because I feel like I don't really register that doing social media work is work like I understand that editing is work but like filming a sponsorship editing a sponsorship filming a TikTok like to me that's not work and so I'll spend an entire day doing that stuff and I'm like I got nothing done today and then I think about it, I'm like okay no I did this this and this and this this but to me it's not work and so I feel like when I do social media stuff full-time I'm working more hours in a day like I'm doing stuff more whereas when I had my full-time job like I would probably get done with work around 3 30 to 4 30 just kind of depending on the day and then I would go home and I go on a walk I'd go to Pilates I do stuff and then I'd like do stuff when I got home I was done with stuff earlier in the day than now because I was just about to work for like two more hours being like oh I did nothing and I do feel like because I had the inspection and lunch that probably took like an hour of my time however I started earlier in the morning like I don't know I've just been doing stuff all day but in my head I don't categorize it as actually working so that's kind of like a mental block that I need to get over I didn't really buy myself a ton of snacks so I've been making this a ton recently like honestly maybe I need to chill with how much I've been making this but I thought I'd show it to you guys so I'm making like a peanut butter oats and chocolate chip thing and I've been making a PB powder PB Fit powder, and then these Quaker oats, old fashioned oats. These are like not almost gone, but they're going to be gone if I keep making it at this rate. I feel like I should be doing more work. Here's also the thing too, because I feel like I work more hours in the day, I feel like I burn myself out more. Do I, I need to do this as I'm doing this. <laughs> I feel like I don't give myself enough grace because I feel like I spend more hours doing stuff but at the same time how I keep saying like it doesn't feel like I'm doing any work so then at the end of the day I'm like I didn't do anything today I need to do more and then I end up doing more and then at the end of the day I feel burnt out because I'm like pushing myself to do too much but then I'm also telling myself that I'm not doing anything so I'm like why am I being burnt out if I'm not doing anything but I am like do you hear what I'm saying like I even saying it out loud I'm like this sounds dumb I could buy PB powder keep calling it PB powder PB fit powder with water I never get the water consistency right but a lot of you guys were commenting that I need to enjoy this kind of unemployed era of my life and just kind of use it for self-improvement and focus on myself because when I get in a job I'm not going to have all this free time that I have now which you guys are so right this needs more water so as I'm trying to do YouTube and social media and all that stuff full time again while I look for a job I'm also trying to not push myself too hard so I can enjoy this time actually because I'm never really going to get it back unless I get laid off again which fingers crossed that's not going to happen again See, I'm mixing it and turning it into like a little peanut butter consistency. And then I'm gonna mix it with some oats. So that's kind of where I'm at right now, of like just trying to give myself grace, trying to do stuff, but not too much. Like I'm trying to lay by the pool. I'm trying to go on walks, but I'm also trying to apply for jobs, have interviews, film videos, edit video. Like I'm, I feel like I'm trying to do a little bit too much, but not giving myself credit at all for anything that I'm doing. I'm also gonna add these little mini chocolate chips from Toll House. Just like a little teeny tiny handful of them for a little, a little chocolate. So that's where I'm at right now. I had a feeling that kind of getting back into this routine was gonna make me struggle, but I honestly think that having the job that I had made me feel much better about doing social media and it definitely made me have the mindset of like, I am doing stuff. I am working hours. It's not like I'm wasting my day just sitting on TikTok scrolling. Like I'm editing things, I'm filming things, and it may not be exactly what I want to be doing all day. And it's not what I want to do full time for the rest of my life as a job, but I am doing stuff and I need to give myself credit for that. So we're working on that, but I'm going to eat this and then I'm going to get ready. Looks like this. Doesn't look very good, but it is. <laughs> I'm going to eat this, put on some leggings, and we're going to go on a walk. Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I just filmed like a little get ready with me for TikTok talking a little bit. Every time I do, I feel like I have to like redo my makeup afterwards because it's like doing your makeup with no mirror because I'm not looking into the mirror really when I'm doing it. And then I look back and I'm like, oh God, like what was I thinking? Like that was not a good idea. So we're just touching up a little bit. It never looks good ever. Like I don't think I've ever once done my makeup filming a get ready with me on TikTok and it's turned out well, never in my life. I'm also trying the Fit Me powder for the first time. I 
think the shade actually is really nice, but it looks kind of like chalky. Like it doesn't look like airbrushed pretty. It looks powdery, crinkly mess. And I'm not obsessed with that look. So I don't know if I'm like into it, but we'll see. If you guys have any pressed powder recommendations that aren't expensive, please let me know because I would be so into them been really into this blush though but i always feel like i'm overdoing it but then i always get compliments about how cute i look every time oh whoa do you, anyone just see that that just flew out i always get compliments every time i wear it that i look like extra cute like i think it makes you look like adorable in a sense it's like an adorable looking blush like you look so like youthful it's the patrick todd just enough blush love it this morning i went to the gym and then i've been working on some stuff for sponsorships i have like a few lined up and i had all these lined up before i even got laid off which is so 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 nice just having a little stream of income and obviously i wouldn't do a sponsorship with a company that i didn't believe in i was planning on filming one today but then they were like oh we actually need you to wait and so it kind of it kind of messed up my week a little bit like the how I had everything set up and planned, but it is what it is. I also had my therapy appointment today. My therapist and I are the exact same person. Like anytime I'm doing something, she also does it. I just did something, she just does it. Like w I want to be her friend, but I don't think I'm allowed to be her friend <laughs> for obvious reasons because she is my therapist. And, like we're not probably allowed to like hang out and like get coffee, um, which is fine, you know. Sorry, th this is just me doing like some work. Pause. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. I feel, I was saying this, but I feel like I work more hours and I do more stuff. Now that I'm doing this full time again, I have that interview. It's like a 15 minute screening call tomorrow. I'm also literally editing as I'm talking right now. That's kind of funny. I also um, have LinkedIn premium because part of my job, they were having me do like LinkedIn training courses. And so I had to get like a free trial of LinkedIn premium. And I was seeing the people that also applied for this job that I'm doing the screening call for tomorrow. There's people with their masters. There's people who have like five, 10 years of experience there, you know? So I'm like, uh, am I gonna get it? I don't wanna say no. I've been seeing a lot of people saying like, I've been job searching for seven, eight months now and like haven't been able to find anything. I feel like I'm definitely thinking way too far in advance and I kind of need to bring myself back down to earth right now. Of Like this is just a 15 minute screening call, Keegan, chill. I need to kind of ground myself a little bit more but i do have it tomorrow and so tomorrow i will be doing a lot of preparing for it but i'm gonna finish editing this tiktok right now i like to edit talking tiktoks on my computer because i've been making videos for 10 years now and so i'm just very quick with it on a computer whereas on a phone i can still do it quick but it takes me a significant more amount of time so i'm gonna edit this I just finished editing that video. I think that what I want to do is film an errands vlog. So I want to film a little vlog of me running errands. I have a ton of returns to do. I have to go to the post office. I have a bunch of stuff to do. So I want to film that. So that's going to be a separate video. It's probably already going to be up before you guys see this. So I'll link it down below if it's already up. If not, it'll probably be the next video, but I have a feeling it's probably already up. Also this cardigan, I used to wear this at work every single day. I just like left it on my chair because my office was really cold. It's from Amazon. I'll link it down below. It is like the best cardigan ever. It is so warm and I think it's like so, so cute, but it's kind of cold in my apartment. I love it. I'm like, one good thing is that I could bring this home with me. I actually have like a more expensive cardigan from Abercrombie and I prefer this one so much more because that one is like a little staticky almost, which is kind of weird. And it's like, it's not itchy, but like this is just so much softer. Like the fact that this is Amazon is so nice. It's also like so thick. I don't know why I'm giving you guys a full review of this cardigan when it's like close to summer, but I love it. I love it so much. Also another funny thing. I don't know. I'm like in a chatty mood. Someone commented there yesterday on one of my TikToks. They're like, Keegan, I love you. Wear your hair down more. And like, I totally agree. I need to stop wearing my hair up, but I just hate washing it so often. I just got home from running my errands on my errands vlog. I still have my shoes on. I am like kind of mad at myself for a very small thing that I really shouldn't be mad at myself for. It was a simple mistake. I just feel like, ugh. One of my old coworkers sent me a job listing from a former company that she was at before she started working for my last company that I worked at, which was so nice of her. I really, really appreciated that. So I applied for it this morning. A recruiter texted me when I was out running errands and she was like, hi, like, um, I saw that you applied for a job, left a chat, like letting you know this is the top end of our budget. And it was actually an hour rather than a salary, which I've been seeing a little bit, which I think is interesting, but my last job was salary. And so I did the math on it and when I did the math, I put in two numbers. Let me find my phone. We're getting back up. <laughs> so to figure out how comparable it would be my last salary, because truthfully, I don't want to work for a job that's less than my last company. She just responded to me. Give me a second, give me a second. 
Okay, I'm fixing my error. Putting this in my... Okay, so anyways, I did the math on this. So she gave me the, with the hourly rate. It's like, that's the top end of their budget, which I do appreciate that she was transparent with me. And so I looked it up, like how much does the average American work? And, oh, maybe that's why. Okay, my Google has like the little AI thing. I don't know if your Google, guys' Google does, but mine has AI overviews are experimental, learn more. So I Googled how many hours do Americans work in a year? And so Google, the AI Google said eight, 1,892 hours per year. I don't know if that's like, some people don't work like the straight 40 hours in a work week. Some people go home early, vacations, what you have it. That number is under my last salary. There's also the Americans work 2,080 working hours, which is, you know, there's 52 weeks in a year you were 48 out you were 40 hour work weeks blah 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 that equals just slightly above my salary like just slightly above my last salary which i would be fine with so i don't know like i'm curious to see like how many out like what the hours would be for this company but so she messaged me and i was she was like asking me if that would work and i was like yes like that would like i'm open to seeing the opportunity like i'm not going to turn something down and then i asked her when she's available to connect and i forgot to put a question mark i put a period and i'm so i'm such like a grammar and like a punctuation person my mom is an english teacher like so mad at myself because it looks unprofessional and like clearly it was not that big of a deal because she just set up a time for tomorrow i just feel like it's not like the best look it's not a big deal it's not a big deal so tomorrow i have two interviews ah! that's crazy i cannot believe i have two interviews tomorrow so it'll be like less than 24 hours from now i think this job might be remote i need to look more into it i'm gonna what the heck i oh, oh my god i just i just went to my instagram and this is what pops up it's like someone on a toilet and it's blurred out but i was like what am i who am i following i I want to email my past coworker and just like say thank you and like say that like I'm interviewing with them but um I'm curious to see like I need to look more into it so I have two like first round kind of screening interviews tomorrow mm, I'm like so thankful that my coworker um uh, sent me that listing I really she was saying she was like it's all about connections and references like finding jobs like you can obviously apply on LinkedIn but like having connections and people will get you so much further and I clearly so much agree with that because my first interview tomorrow is with somebody who worked at my former company my second interview tomorrow someone my former company sent me the listing because it wasn't like on LinkedIn or anything. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna message her and thank her just officially officially scheduled it I'm also paying for an appraisal for my condo right now <sighs> I'm so grown up, but I I'm so grown up But I also am too lazy to get up to get my credit card because I need to put that in Will it auto do it? Will it auto do it? Let's see. It won't. The thing is I never want to get up but I'm going to oh, Wow being an adult who would have thought I was telling my mom the other day, I was on the phone with her and I was like, I just hate being an adult mom. Why'd you do this to me? And she's like, I didn't make you grow up. And I was like, but you made me be on this earth. But like, thank you. But also this is a lot of work. I was like, I didn't ask to be born. She's like, neither did I. And I was like, touche. Touche. Not gonna show you guys my credit card information. I got my wallet stolen once. Not about to get my credit card information stolen. Not again. Well, not again, but you know what I mean. Can you guys see my credit card? I don't think you guys can see my, if my current credit card is currently out. I don't think you can see it. Oh, it might. Wait, why is this not working? What the heck? It's frozen. When my thing was frozen, I was just like tapping it a ton because I'm so impatient. And then a bunch of letters just like popped up. Great. I wanted to go on a walk today, but I don't think that's gonna happen. Right now I'm editing my closet cleanup video. I still think there's more that I need to film for it, but we're a little bit in. I've only edited two minutes of it. I still have a ton to go, but there's no way that I'm going to get to going on a walk today, which is kind of upsetting. I'm trying to like figure out how to manage my time these days because it's just so different from when I was at my job. I think that's honestly been the biggest challenge so far. I know there's going to be bigger challenges soon. Interviews, applications, all that kind of stress is coming up right now. I feel like I'm in like the, I don't know what the phase of it is, but it's like the race period of like I don't have any of that anxiety yet because everything's just kind of like loading in the background and part of me is like should I start going and walks in the morning but then I'm like that takes up more of my morning I think a lot of things are just taking me more time than I'm like anticipating and planning for them to so that's something that I need to work on good morning you guys happy Wednesday today I have those two interviews not necessarily I don't even know if they're like considered interviews but they're like the first round screening type of things. I definitely will be nervous about them later on today, but I'm refusing to think about it until I have to. But before they start, I want to like prepare and brief myself. Last time I did this, I was kind of like, why didn't I plan more ahead? But I think because I did this less than a year ago, I'm putting off before like on my little eczema marks. I don't know if this is going to help, but my skin is so dry. Anything will help. Because I did this less than a year ago, I hope that I have a little bit more experience. I have no idea how this is going to go. I wish that they just told you the questions that they asked beforehand, but they don't. Like, hi, can you 
prepare me for what you're gonna ask me so I can prepare a perfect answer. Thank you. I think I'm going to finish filming a couple videos this morning before I wait to have my interviews. It's also pretty early in the morning. You can tell me I'm tired. I'm not going to the gym this morning or like for the rest of the week because I'm going to do Pilates and stuff. So I have a lot more time because I feel like going to the gym takes up so much time. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but it's like if you go to the gym for an hour, it's not just being at the gym for an hour. It's getting ready to go to the gym. It's traveling to the gym, doing the gym, coming back getting ready eating like it's like a whole like it's like a three hour long process of actually going to the gym it takes up so much time i still want to make it a priority now that i'm like doing my own thing but we have more time today because i don't have to do it right now okay before i film this video i want to like talk about something about a comment that i read and i feel like first of all it's early early in the morning so my brain is not fully there and i also feel like whenever i talk about this i can never really talk about it in like the right way like i don't feel well spoken about this topic at all so it kind of scares me talking about this i posted this tiktok and this was me like hard launching that i was laid off okay it was with this audio and i thought this was hilarious unemployed hungry dirty Sad. That was me like posting for the first time that I was laid off and I thought it was really funny And it was just like a swipe through of photos Like my derail went off in the middle of me being laid off and then like, you know, whatever So I got a comment and I actually deleted this comment because I was gonna talk about this And I didn't want anyone like going to that person and like giving them hate So if I ever like talk about something that I want to talk about and someone like leaves a negative comment I don't want them to like face any backlash or anything like that. So I delete it Someone commented they're like stop complaining like you have a job like a job to fall back on like it's giving out of touch influencer first of all i wasn't complaining i was just saying that i was being laid off there is a huge fear of mine that i don't want to ever sound like an out of touch influencer because i'm so aware of how fortunate i am to be doing this i know that i've been doing this for like almost 11 years now which is insane and it's something that i've definitely like put time and effort into like it's not something that was just like handed to me like i've definitely done this but it wouldn't be here without you guys and i don't ever want to seem like i'm getting my nails i'm going to pilates my life is so rough like that's not at all what i ever want to sound like and i feel like even when i did social media full-time like i feel like there was a lot of influencers that i was like i don't even relate to and we do the exact same thing it's just very aware of me that i don't want to sound like an out of touch person i feel very fortunate to fall back on social media like i know i keep making comments about me being unemployed but like i do have a stream of income from social media even in the moment when i was being laid off and when they were telling me that you know they were laying me off i remember thinking thank god that i have social media to fall back on like thank god that i do this that i kept up with this that i didn't stop doing this the second and I got a job and just completely stopped. Like, I remember being like, thank God. Obviously, I wasn't going to stop doing it. Like, I don't expect myself, I will expect myself to be like 50 years old doing this. I hope this video isn't perceived the way that that person perceived me of like, oh, I'm complaining, I'm acting like I have no stream of income because that's not the case. And I am not where I want to be because I don't want to be doing social media full time. I want to have a career and a job. And that's kind of the life that I want to have for myself when I'm older. Even now, like, that's just where I see myself going is having a more traditional career because I really enjoyed that. But in this trend, transitional period obviously i'm doing social media full time i feel like i'm like talking into circles i'm just really afraid of coming off that way and i know that there are so many people who have been laid off that don't have an extra stream of income like i do and i'm very fortunate for that i don't want to act like that's not something that i have especially doing this and then i was talking earlier like how i had some sponsorships lined up from before i was even laid off that i'm doing now obviously i would never take a sponsorship with a company that i didn't trust believe and use their products etc it's a very fortunate situation that i'm in it's not something that will sustain me super long term obviously i don't know that comment just like kind of upset me because it's something that i am very afraid of coming off as and i feel like it's something that i try really hard to be and then it's also so hard because it makes me not want to share how i'm feeling about certain things because it makes me feel like oh people are just going to perceive me as out of touch or ungrateful or because i'm in a more fortunate situation than some other people i shouldn't be allowed to talk about how i'm feeling about this i shouldn't be allowed to feel that way like it kind of like makes me feel like i'm invalidating myself in that sense which obviously I don't want to feel and I feel like I really want my videos to be an actual true representation of my life how, I'm go how things are going how I'm feeling what I'm doing and I feel like vulnerability has always been I don't know if this is gonna make any sense but I feel like vulnerability has always been like the star of my relationship with you guys like me talking about getting laid off getting cheated on unsure about where I am in life 
even getting a job like there are so many things that i feel like the things that i share about my life that's not so picture perfect has made me closer to you guys but when i get comments like that it makes me afraid that people think that way about me and then it makes me like oh then i just i shouldn't talk about it at all i actually i remember i don't know why this is like seared into my brain but one time i had like a sunday reset video tiktok that i had made someone commented they're like imagine doing all of this and having a real job and this was at the time that i actually like had my job and i remember i didn't respond to the comment but i remember thinking like do you have a job and what does it have to do with me cleaning my apartment like i think that um like it was so out of the blue and it was just so random like it had nothing to do with anything that i was like sharing or anything like that like i was just cleaning my apartment on a sunday and regardless like i wouldn't even if i had like a traditional corporate job i wouldn't even be working on a sunday i don't know why that's just like i feel like i get like little comments and like digs like that and it makes me be like oh am i just extremely out of touch because i feel like it's something that i want to be aware of if i am out of touch i feel like i try really hard to like round myself in a sense i try my best i'm not perfect i'm only human we all have our moments we all have things that we're better at than others i don't know i feel like i'm like really going off about this i don't know why like it was the first thing that i read when i woke up this morning and there's that thing where it's like the first thing that you see in the morning says something with the chemicals in your brain and it sets your day up and like it just kind of like made me feel like oh god maybe i should just like stop talking about this entirely because maybe like the feelings that i have aren't valid because i do have social media on the side like it just i get where that person was coming from don't get me wrong like i am very fortunate to have this and that's not something that most people have and i'm incredibly thankful that like i feel like i'm going in circles but i'm so thankful that i have social media and that i've like been doing it for so long and this is something that i started when i was 13 years old and i'm so glad that like when i was 13 i decided to do it and i'm so glad that like every single year of my life i continue to stick with it and do it and like not quit and give up ah oh, i just hit my elbow and then i already have like a bruise do i have a bruise there yeah right there i have a bruise right there it's a very small bruise but i hurt myself really hard so my whole elbow is just getting beat up i have like all these scratches too too. like it's a scratch right there like what the hell is going on i don't know i feel like sometimes doing social media like to certain people it feels like nothing i do will ever be enough nothing i fear is ever valid or true enough any hardship i have is not actually hard because i have social media and it makes me it makes me feel that way too like oh maybe i should stop completely maybe i should just not be allowed to feel this way maybe i shouldn't share it on the internet but i want to i want to share these things i want to like share what i'm going through and i think that one thing that i keep trying to remind myself is nobody is exactly the same like nobody's story is the same like even people who have been laid off might be in a completely different position than me like no two people are the same no people's two people's stories are the same this is just mine i don't know why i'm like i feel like i'm just going in circles and i just feel like i'm like talking myself into a hole being like no i am out of touch shut the fuck up keegan i don't know i just want to apologize if like me talking about this is out of touch if you guys want me to stop if unrelatable you know like i don't know i just i don't want to do anything wrong <laughs> and i feel like i'm just doing everything wrong after that comment i don't know. most mean comments don't get to my head but the ones that like kind of solidify something that i'm already afraid of do like i'm constantly afraid of being out of touch and i'm constantly trying to not i don't know like i'm not perfect but when i get comments that are like oh you're out of touch i'm like fuck like that's the one thing that i'm trying to or not the one thing that's one thing that i'm trying so hard not to be i'm not perfect and my life is clearly not normal because i posted on the internet but i'm gonna shut up um i feel like this little rant of mine probably was just me going nowhere like it was just me rambling about nothing so i'm gonna go film my video I'm reading all of your guys' comments from my layoff video. I wish I could respond to every single one of them. Normally I try to. I think that this particular video is like a lot of like emotional weight to it, but I want to let you guys know that I like read every single comment and they all mean so much to me. I love you guys. I've also been really obsessed with this like peanut butter oats chocolate chip breakfast thing that I've been making. I still have not meal prepped my breakfast that I was supposed to meal prep for the week. I have not done that. Also, major tea. The condo that I almost got that um, I couldn't get because no bank would lend on it. The one that I was, my SD card was full. We got a new one. Now I'm gonna transfer some of the files from my old SD card. The old condo that I was so devastated that I couldn't get that I wanted so badly, it's now back on the market. And I couldn't get it because I had to get an all cash offer because there's like an issue with like the insurance of it all And here's the thing I feel very bad for these people that they can only sell their house to an all cash offer now Like there's not an option for any bank to lend on it My mom on the other hand does not feel sorry for them 
<laughs> and I thought I would tell you guys this story because this still blows my mind that this happened. The people that were selling this condo were absolute jerks. They were so terrible and they did so many unprofessional things that my real estate agent was like, I've never once experienced this once, let alone twice in her career. First of all, I saw this house. It was like a coming soon listing on my realtor's like system that she has because it gives you like, it like sends you auto properties, I guess. And I saw it and I was like, I love this. I want to tour it. And so we asked them, we're like, hey, I saw this is coming soon. Like, are we able to tour this before it's like on the market? And they were like, yeah, sure. So we toured it the next day, loved it. And then I offered something on it. I offered, I think 5,000 below asking. And then I think I asked them to cover 3,000 of closing costs. And they were like, hey, this hasn't been on the market yet. Like we think we can get full price for it. If you want to offer full price, yes. If not, no. And honestly, they severely underlisted this property. Like this house should have been like $50,000 more than it was. And I mean that in the most sincere way, like everything in that area, that size, that finishes, like every single thing comparable was way more expensive than this place. And so I was like, honestly, I think I'm fine with paying full price. I think that this house is just like severely underlisted. Like it's, they're listed it for way less than they should and this is like a steal so even at full price yes so my real estate agent was on the phone their real estate agent they were like okay she'll take full offer or she'll take full price send over the paperwork we get the paperwork it's one thousand dollars above the full price listing on the paperwork. So my real estate agent calls their real estate agent and she's like, hey, like this isn't what we discussed, is this a mistake? And their real estate agent was like, my seller just thinks that he could probably get it for more. But and they never once said, actually, no, we want it for $1,000 more than listing price. No, they just sent over the paperwork without like, asking us in my head up thinking is this normal my real estate agent says no i've never had this happen to me before never verbally agree to something and then the paperwork completely something different that you didn't agree on at all didn't even like ask talk about it and one thousand dollars is a lot of money don't get me wrong but in the grand scheme of things of buying a house when you're spending money on a house you're like okay one thousand dollars is not that much i was like whatever it's one thousand dollars i still don't think that i could get this home anywhere else for this price we do that when we we're doing all this they're like hey we kind of want to extend the closing date like we need some time to figure some things out like can we kind of drag it on for a month and we were like yeah let's do it i'm fine with that because my lease ends here in june so i was like the longer we can have it the less i'm paying rent and a mortgage at the same time because there was going to be a little bit of overlap and so we had our inspection very small things wrong with the inspection like the insulation wasn't fit properly there wasn't like a gfi outlet which is like there's supposed to be certain outlets next to water sources like a sink like it should be a certain type of outlet they didn't have that like very small things and so we asked them to fix like the important things we weren't very nitpicky on it i thought what we were asking for was very reasonable they came back and they were like, we don't want to fix it, but we will give you a credit of X amount of money so you can fix it yourself. I was like, that's great. That, that amount of money will definitely fix what needs to be fixed. The paperwork had sent over half the amount of money, half the amount of money that they said on the phone that they were going to give us. My agent calls their agent and she, he was like, yeah, my seller just thinks that he offered too much with, with the credit, the original offer. And they didn't communicate this to us at all. They just keep sending, they keep saying something on the phone, then sending over paperwork. Like what? What? Why? I don't know. My agent was like, I've never had this happen to me once, let alone twice. The fact that they keep doing this is extremely unprofessional, extremely like cocky. Another thing too, is they were very nitpicky about certain things. Like they were like, we had a title company on the paperwork and they're like, actually we want this title company. Like they were very nitpicky about the smallest little things. And we we're like, that's so weird. So th these people were just, they would say one thing and they'd be like, no, like I feel like because I accepted that $1,000 over asking price that they were like, well, we can do whatever we want. And then it gets even better. So all of this has happened. And then they were like, actually, we would like to speed up the closing date. We wanted to drag it on for a month, but we don't want to do that anymore. And this was the one thing that I finally had a say in because everything else, I kind of felt like I had to go with what they were saying or else I couldn't get the house. If I didn't want to accept how much credit they were giving me for the to fix all the inspection issues, then I dropped out the offer. This was the one thing that I had. And I was like, no, we are keeping the closing date as is. We are not changing it. We are dragging it out. Like you originally said, I want this to be dragged out because I don't want to pay like as much rent but that was like the one thing that i had and i was like just just for that yeah and so when we found out that we couldn't get this condo because you could only pay all cash for it because there's an insurance issue with it my mom was like serves them right like they deserve that and like honestly i don't think they deserve that i feel like that's a very shitty situation to be in and i do feel really bad for them i wonder if they're going to treat the next buyers the same way they treated me i don't know because they need a very specific type of buyer i found out a week ago 
ago almost. I think today's Wednesday. I found out last Thursday that I wasn't able to get the house. The I keep calling it a house, it's a condo because of that. And they just relisted it today. So I'm like, hmm. Anyways, that's kind of the story of the horrible sellers of this house. They were so mean to me. I feel like my name is like on all the paperwork too. And I wonder if they like Google me and saw that I was like a young girl. And the fact that I just kept agreeing to all the things probably made them be like, well, then we can do whatever we want. I was so happy that I was able to be like, no, we're dragging out clothes, <laughs> even though I didn't even get the place, but whatever. They were just horrible. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else had an experience like that, but my real estate agent kept saying like, this is not standard. This is not how these things go. This is not what happens. You don't agree to something over the phone, send over the paperwork. It's completely something different that you didn't even talk about. Not once, twice, changing your mind, everything. I don't know. So I thought I'd share that story with you guys. I was planning on sharing it with you guys once I got the place, but I didn't get the place. I'm going to keep checking that listing though. Like I'm going to keep checking it because I want to see how much people pay for it because I feel like they have to sell it for less if they can only get an all cash offer. That's just my thought process. consensus on the Maybelline Fit Me powder. I don't like it. I feel like it looks really like crusty under my eyes. I really don't like it. I don't like it at all. Return the Kosas powder because I didn't like it, but I honestly liked that one more. Part of me is like, do I, do I go back and get it again? But I'm like, that's, I don't want to, I'm not a fan of it. Just like, it's not what I want. I was also looking at some of my interview prep from last year, from when I was interviewing for my past job. I was like, oh wow, I really need to prep these questions of like, tell me about yourself and like those type of things. I don't know why I'm so calm about this. I know that I won't be calm the second it happens, but I'm trying my best to be calm. Reading that, I was like, oh wow, I'm not at all prepared. I should have prepared those answers. The interview isn't for another hour and a half on the dot, hour and a half on the dot. So I'm gonna straighten my hair, find something to wear, and then prep those questions. I'm like, is it weird to have the interview with my bed in the background? I don't know. Guys, I just got fully ready for this interview. Makeup, hair, outfit. It's over the phone. I just went to go look at the Zoom link because it starts in 30 minutes. It's over the phone. Yeah, mm, that's fun. Oh well. Um, so I kind of wasted my time getting ready today, but whatever. I prepped a ton of interview like answers that I have. Like, let's see, what did I prep? Tell me about yourself. Why do you want to work here? Why are this candidate for this role? Where do you see yourself in five years? What are your salary expectations and questions? Because this is just like a 15 minute screening call. I wish I didn't spend so much time getting ready and not that i spent a ton of time getting ready but now i'm like more nervous because i feel like phone calls are really awkward my other interview is over the phone too i feel like phone calls are really awkward because i always like talk over people on the phone by accident because i just i never know <laughs> if they're gonna talk like if they're done talking you know, it's just like it's awkward so hmm. this top i'm literally gonna take it off right now because i have a shirt underneath it i got this for my internship when i was 19 years old from nordstrom rack because i didn't need to do all this i'm like more nervous for it now but it's fine it's fine it's fine the interview was over. It was supposed to be 15 minutes and it was a little bit less than a half an hour. It was somebody, I think I said this, like it was somebody who worked at my last company, but I never worked with this person. I never actually talked to them at my company. He said that he had talked to my last boss and my last boss like gave him great stuff. I really loved my last boss. My last boss was amazing. I'm curious what my last boss said. Clearly it was great. And so he was saying that like this phone call was just kind of more of a formality and that the next thing that will be actually be like the first round interview, he wants me to prepare kind of like, what did he say? I wrote it down. I took notes but kind of like a strategy plan for like what i'd want to do on the job i don't have the next interview until monday which is nice and so yeah it went well i think so i hope so it was definitely like the the connection was very nice of um working at the last company he talked to my boss beforehand i i keep saying this my last boss was the most amazing person ever i like really i think i think so highly of him and so the fact that he like said nice things about me it was like yes okay but now i have a meeting right now with my youtube manager so i'm gonna hop onto that Okay, I just ate lunch. I had my meeting with my YouTube manager, lunch, and then I've been prepping for my other interview, just kind of like going over the job description, adjusting my like about me kind of like interview prep and what do you like about this company type of thing. Actually, ChatGPT is like down today. If you guys don't know, I love ChatGPT. Oh, I keep calling it ChatGBT. It's ChatGPT. I actually found that out. One of my bosses was like, Keegan, like, what is the difference between ChatGBT and ChatGPT? Because you keep calling it B and I always use the P. And I was like, what are you talking about? So it turns out for over a year, I've been calling it the wrong thing. <sighs> Anyways, when I use ChatGBT, I don't like copy and paste the answer. Like I always adjust it. I don't think I've ever taken anything ChatGPT 
has said completely copied it and kept it I always put it into my own words and change it but I kind of use it as like a nice baseline um sometimes it's hard to like get the ball rolling and so that's just like a nice starting point to adjust it sometimes it's like not at all the same what the outcome is versus what it starts with but I have all my questions ready this one's a little bit different because it's a little bit different of a role but the company seems really great this is the one that I didn't put the question mark at the end so yeah wish me luck on this you guys oh this is crooked I'm trying to have you sit on my Stanley but that's not it's not working hmm. my last interview I think it went well I hope so I have another interview I think I said this on Monday with them and then I go to Coachella afterwards oh my gosh it's been a day but after this I have like still so much to do just had my second interview. So this one was 16 minutes, or it was a little bit less than 16 minutes because I think she called me. I think it was like 14 minutes. Okay, I don't know why I'm getting into the specifics of this. I definitely was like word vomiting a little bit, something I do. She asked me like the strengths and weaknesses question, which I was like, why didn't I prepare that? In the past, I prepared it. And then nobody ever asked it to me, so I just removed it from my thing, for my little like document where I was planning, and I should not have done that. They told me by the end of the week that they'll let me know. This is very early in the process. I'm still like kind of like shaky. I definitely feel less shaky in the second interview than I had in my first interview. I don't know if it's just that I had the first interview earlier and I felt more confident and comfortable. I think that's probably it honestly. Like the fact that the more experience you have the better you feel. Overall I will say I feel a lot better and more comfortable in these interviews this time around than I did last time because I just feel more confident in my abilities and my experience which I'm really thankful for. This last job I think really like empowered me in a way that I felt like why am I about to cry? Like my eyes feel spicy. I feel like my last job gave me a lot of like self-assurance reassure i don't know the right word for that having more experience in that and just like even like understanding like the lingo of the corporate world like I just feel like I feel more assured of myself and my abilities and like the value that I bring although it definitely you know we can all like second guess ourselves and doubt ourselves I feel really proud of myself for the way that I'm feeling now um I do think this last interview I kind of talked in circles and was like well you know but they told me that they'd let me know by the end of the week so who knows excited to see where it all goes I need to text my friends ah one thing you guys should know about me is I never answer my phone if there's an un known caller that calls me I don't answer it even if it's like a friend that calls me if they cold call me don't really answer it however I got a call and I was like, I'm gonna answer it. Like, I don't, like, I've just been, you know, I've had all these phone call interviews. I'm in a phone talking mood. And it was a cookie delivery service. And they're like, hi, I have cookies for you. Like, and I was like, is this kind of sketchy? Congratulations on your new home. It's been a treat working from you. It's the home lender. How stinking cute is this? This is literally adorable. Thank you so much, Scott. <laughs> we're gonna do a cookie haul. We got a cacti, cactus. And I said cacti because there's two because we're in Arizona. You know how cute? Oh, I get it. They made it look like a house. So there's a house. A welcome mat and then like two cacti. This is the house. Looks just like the one I got. No, just kidding. And then a key. How cute. I don't know which one I'm gonna eat first. I think I'm gonna do the cactus. This is so sweet. I just emailed him and said thank you. Mmm. Hello everyone. Happy Thursday. I got ready for the day, about to go to the mall. I have to return my other pair of jeans. This is the pair of jeans that I decided to keep because I had two pairs of jeans. And then I have to go to the mall to film a little sponsorship. And then when I get home, I need to finish filming the sponsorship, editing it. I just edited a little morning TikTok vlog. I don't know why every time I've been doing my makeup recently, I haven't been liking it. I don't know if it's that powder that I'm using. I think it's like my under eyes that I don't like. And I think it's just probably that powder. So maybe I need to stop using that. But we're about to head off to the mall, do our little errands. My outfit, this top is from garage these are my levi's pants i don't feel like myself today i feel like the past couple times i've been doing my makeup i just haven't been liking it but i did curl my hair today yeah we're about to i don't know what else to say but that's kind of where we're at today. Mall two times in one week. Oh, what was I doing? I was looking for the stuff I need to bring to the mall. I'm doing a sponsorship with Pandora. I'm actually wearing some earrings from there, which I think are really, really cute. And they sent me the cutest jewelry to do with them, to work with them. Like, look at how cute this is. And so I'm gonna go to the mall and get them engraved, but I'm very, very, very excited. And let's go, let's go to the mall. Part of me really wants to go to Sephora and get a new powder for under my eyes, but I'm like, I'm literally half employed. I need to stop spending so much money as if I have like all the funds in the world. I'm back from running my errands. I filmed my sponsorship. I edited it. I sent it. I also finished editing a YouTube video. I'm uploading it now. I just need to do like the thumbnail and description and tags. I don't really know what I want to do for the thumbnail for it. Yikes. Yeah, whatever, but I'm going to make lunch right now. We're going to make hot honey chicken meatballs. I saw a TikTok with this. I made this like a couple weeks ago. I've been thinking about it ever since. So we're going to make it again. And last time I didn't make it with you guys. So I thought I'd make it with you here. Who made this? This creator called Carissa Stanton. Stanton? Carissa Stanton. This girl right here. Great food. Hi. Easy, delicious.
delicious high protein dinners in under 20 minutes using ingredients. One little life hack that I have for you guys, if you do not want to dirty like cups and measuring spoons, use a food scale. I'm gonna put a pan, if I can find my pan. So, ooh, okay, on the stove top, I'm gonna set it on low. I only like to cook it on like medium high or medium low, but since it's heating up, I don't want it to get too hot because we have quite a bit to prep. So she actually calls for green onions in this, but I don't have green onions. I have frozen white onions, so I'm gonna like set it out as I make the sauce. Hopefully it will thaw out a little bit, but we're gonna just include that in it. I love a person who puts the measurements in description. Okay, we're gonna start off with the sauce. This is a hot honey sauce. I don't have all the exact ingredients, but I have pretty close, and I think close is good enough, you know? We're not striving for perfection, just good enough. Okay, I'm gonna move you guys over so you can see everything that I'm doing. But if this isn't perfect, just remember, I might be cut out a little bit in it, but so be it. I'll link this food scale down below. It's from Amazon, but this is great, like I'm saying. What I like to do is just put it in here, zero it out so this technically weighs nothing. So instead of having to put a third a cup of this into a third cup, I'm just gonna squeeze. And then once it gets two, think about this, so you have to do math. Hey Siri, how many tablespoons are in a third of a cup? So we're aiming for about 21. One gram. You have to do math, but I actually don't mind math, so. One thing I recommend is starting small because there's been many, this is not, this does not feel like enough. Oh, that's teaspoons. That makes sense. Hey Siri, how many teaspoons in a third cup? Okay, 16 teaspoons, four grams. Okay, we're going for, I thought we were going for 21. We're going for 64. That makes so much more sense. But you do want to start off small because that's perfect. Cool. Okay, now I'm going to zero this out again and then we're going to add in a third cup of honey. I just did the math for that. Just squeeze her in. I honestly don't think I wanna add as much as this. No, I think I'm fine with adding less because I'm not a super big honey person. Like I definitely want the sweetness from the honey, but I actually don't like the taste of honey. Whenever I'm sick, people are always like, oh, just drink lots of honey, like in, you know, tea. Don't like it. I'm gonna add the rest of the soy sauce that I have. And I have a little bit more. I got a brand new soy sauce because I was running out. About two tablespoons of that. It also calls for white wine vinegar, but I only have rice vinegar. And in my mind, I'm like, this is like the exact same thing. So does it need salt and pepper? And then we're gonna add some minced garlic. I have some pre-minced garlic, if you will. I'm gonna do like a heaping spoonful of that because I love garlic. And then we're just gonna mix it up. I probably should add just like a tiny bit more of honey, you know? This is what she's looking like. I'm mixing her up, super easy. Yay. Okay, now let's go on to the chicken. I'm like, is this still good? It is. It just, it looks like a little weird. Raw chicken, everyone knows. It freaks me out. I know it freaks you guys out too. We're gonna add raw chicken into this. Ground chicken. Ew. Disgusting. Disgusting. This, okay. This is so gross. You're like, Keegan, grow up. I refuse. Okay, I actually do have an egg, but I need a meal prep. My egg bites, I still haven't done that. And I want to use all those eggs for that. So last time I didn't use an egg because I didn't have an egg and I didn't eat it. So she recommends using almond flour instead of breadcrumbs. I think it's like lower calories or carbs or healthier in some way. Let's see, we're going back to the food scale, zeroing it out. And we're gonna do, I think she said half a cup of this, if I'm not mistaken. I accidentally just exit out of it. Half a cup of almond flour or bread cup crumbs. This should just kind of help it like stick together a little bit more. And then we're gonna use that same jarred garlic. Add some yummy garlic in here. And then we're gonna salt and pepper it. And then you can add an egg if you want, but I did it last time and I didn't have an issue. So I'm not gonna do it again. I think there's also like other seasonings you can put in this too if you want. I don't think she put other seasonings in it. Don't mind me, just, okay. And I'm gonna mix this all up. And essentially what we're gonna do, form this into little balls, put it in the pan, let it cook through. And then we're gonna add the sauce. Last time I had to do half and half because I don't know what's going on. My pan was not big enough for this entire thing. So I just kind of made half of it. And then I made half of it again later when I was ready for it. Sorry for my neighbor. I've given up caring. I'm moving. Oh, they stopped. Good. Oh, I want to add my white onion. I don't know if my white onion is going to taste weird in this because it's frozen. I'm going to add it. I'm not going to add too much. Just a little bit. This is less than I used last time. Last time I used half of an onion. She recommends green onion. Like I said, I didn't listen to the instructions when I made it or when I was grocery shopping. I was like, oh, an onion's an onion. No, they're very different things. But honestly, I've never cooked with a green onion. I feel like cooking with a green onion and a shallot, that's just seems so grown up, if you will. One time I said this to my friend and she's like, I cook with a shallot every week. And I was like, oh, you're more of an adult than I am. Shallots, I'm like, what, what do people even put shallots in? Like, I know it's like an 
onion thing. I don't know. It just feels grown up. Anyways, I'm gonna form these into little balls, throw them on the oven pan. But yeah. My biggest recommendation for these is to make them pretty small and roughly around the same size. If they're too big, they won't cook all the way through, then you're gonna have to cook them longer, then the outside is gonna be really dry and the inside will be like barely cooked. So making them small will ensure that they're gonna be cooked all the way through and it's not gonna be gross. And then obviously you wanna make them all around the same size so they cook evenly, that's my tip. And then I have this leftover, trigger warning, and I'm just gonna put it in the fridge and then make them into balls later on. One thing that I like to do is put the lid on it. This kind of helps make it like cook all the way through. When I put the sauce on, you don't want the lid on because that keeps the sauce kind of liquidy. But especially when I'm cooking something that I have to flip, I really like to put the pan on it. The lid on the pan. Ah. Next up is to check it with the meat thermometer, see how well they're cooking all the way through. I want these to be majority cooked or fully cooked before I put the sauce in because it'll still cook a little bit with the sauce in it, but it needs to be, yeah, these are not even close to being done. Wait, maybe. Okay, some are definitely more done than the others. They're not fully done. Maybe like two, three minutes and then we'll check back and put the sauce on them. Also, another thing, I think I might have said this, I made some roasted broccoli earlier this week, so I'm gonna heat this up in the microwave and then that'll be my side dish. I really love just having like the sides prepped because this already, to me, is a lot of work. It's not like that much work, but it's still work. And so having the side dish done makes it so much easier. I also have been like obsessed with broccoli, so I was so excited to roast it this time. I just did salt, pepper, garlic powder, and then some like puree oil on it. And then I roasted it, I think for like 20 minutes at 400, and then I broiled it for like two to three minutes. I get scared broiling things for too long because one time they like smoked up my entire apartment. Actually, that's happened multiple times where it smoked up my entire apartment. Okay, I'm gonna check this because I'm impatient. Okay, it looks like these are done. Yeah, these are done. I prefer them to be like just slightly underdone before I put the sauce in, but it is what it is. Now I'm gonna pour half the sauce because we still have half the chicken left. To make for another day, I'm gonna give it a little mix and then we're just gonna pour it over. I think that's probably enough. And then I'm just gonna kind of kick around this chicken in the sauce and we're gonna let the sauce thicken in the pan. I've talked about this in the past, but it kind of turns into like a syrupy glaze when you heat it up. If you wanted to keep the sauce liquidy, put the pan over it and that will kind of keep it liquidy. I don't know how else to describe it. But if you want it to be thick, which I personally like it to be thick, keep it on, don't put the lid on it. Keep it out in the open. And then I'm gonna put the lid on the sauce, put it in the fridge, and then it'll just be easy. All I have to do is roll them into balls, heat them up, and do the same thing. Next time I feel like making it. This right here makes about two servings for me. It's a nice living alone. I think like every meal that I make makes about four, three to four servings. So I can have this now again for dinner and then, you know, make it again. This is what we have. It's a little bit of a late lunch. I also had the Trader Joe's like jalapeno cream cheese wontons earlier. So I wasn't like super duper hungry for a very filling lunch. I just wanted something. And I also was like, I need to make this before I let this food go bad so this is what we have for right now it looks very yummy i'm excited to try it there is this dog that lives here that's been non-stop barking today and i love dogs but it's been a little annoying and i was trying to film my ad today like i was trying to do my voiceover and it kept barking in the background so i kept having to start over i really hope this isn't too spicy it's so good okay it's a little spicy but it's so good is it cooked it all the way through yeah it is mm, very good i highly recommend this my second time making it i will definitely make it again that's how you know when you like something is when you like keep making it repeatedly this might be my new hyperfixation meal <gasps> Happy Friday, everyone. It's going to be the only clip for today because I'm kind of gonna run out, but I wanted to show you guys everything that I ordered for Coachella, all the clothes that I got. I think by the time this video goes up, I've already like worn and figured out what I wanna wear, but this is all from Princess Polly. Ordered this with my own money. They did not send me this. They don't know that I'm making this. First thing I got is this yellow dress. I think this would be so cute for like the Lana set because I had a very limited amount of time. Like I pretty much had two weeks to figure out what I'm gonna wear. And like with ordering stuff, I ordered express shipping for all of this. I pretty much just gonna go with dresses and boots. And I'm a little worried the boots 
are gonna give me horrible, horrible, horrible blisters, but we'll do what we gotta do. So I ordered this super cute white dress. I'm gonna try these all on for you guys probably in the next weekly vlog when I figure out what I wanna wear, but I'm just unpacking all this. Really, really, really cute. Imagine this like bows and cowboy boots. This I think is such a sleigh, this dress. It's like brown floral and it's asymmetrical. So it's like longer on one side. I think this is so, 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 so cute. Oh, I just remembered. I need to put something on my to-do list, sorry. Okay, I just remembered because this dress would only look good with self-tan, so I put self-tan on my to-do list. This is such a pretty dress. I feel like this out of everything that I ordered is like the most Coachella vibe. I think it's adorable and I'm so excited. I also ordered, like I told you, it's just a dress and boots because that was just the easiest thing I felt like I could do. This kind of like baby doll black silk dress. I think this is adorable as well. Love this. I ordered this dress and I this was the one I was the most excited for and I did try it on and my rib cage is just simply too big for it. It wouldn't zip because my like bones were too wide for it. But this like little cute like dainty dress, I thought this would have been so cute for like the Lana set. No, didn't work. I also ordered that same yellow dress in white just for options. <laughs> And I was like, I could just return this if I don't. And then I also ordered this skirt, which in hindsight, I'm like, I don't really know what I would wear with it. But I thought it was really cute with like the lace detailing. So I'm excited to wear these, figure out what I want to wear. And then I also got a couple things from Amazon. One of them was the world's number one portable fan. I got this. I'm really excited for this because it's just going to be hot, you know? And then I also got some cowboy boots. I told you the boots that I ordered, I ordered them in three different colors. Oh, these are packaged very nicely. I also got them. Oh, I love the brown. I'm thinking these brown boots with that yellow dress and possibly with that brown dress i think this is such a sleigh okay i got them in brown i also ordered like insoles for them to be softer and then i ordered some like stuff for like blisters like preventative and i just know my feet are gonna hurt and i just i have to live with it interesting that these ones come in like these like shiny boxes and the black ones didn't i also ordered them in white i don't know if i want to wear the white boots or the black boot with that black dress but wait i feel like these are slightly different yeah because these ones have a zipper on the side whereas these ones don't i'm gonna try these on right now there, there's something in there so that would not work but i'm so excited i hope these fit oh these are really stiff i have a feeling these will kill my feet I mean, obviously I'm wearing sweatpants, so like not a look, but like they're so cute. Okay, I'm gonna try on. We're gonna try on <laughs> the brown ones with the other foot. I've worn these for two seconds and I have a strong, strong feeling these are gonna give me blisters up my ass. So we're gonna see if I end up deciding that. I think the brown ones are so cute. I love the brown ones. Oh my gosh. And these were like rated really well on Amazon. And for cowboy boots, I don't, ooh, they're like squishy. I don't, I wouldn't say these are like cheap by any means. See, I have a blister on the back of this foot and I'm really nervous for it. What if I did this? Like, no, that is just kidding. Well, part of me is like, huh, but no, no. I am really scared for the blister that I have on the back of this foot that it's gonna hurt because I'm walking two seconds and it's already hurting, but I kind of love them. Slay. Anyways, we will try these all on on Monday. It's gonna, we're gonna have to figure it out at the very last second, which should I really be doing that? No, but that's what we're gonna be doing. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Mwah.